It is almost a year ago that we finished building the foundation and the concrete slab for our house. We then waited for the rains and the hot weather to pass and now it's time to start building again. First we needed materials. Things like steel. Lots of it. Three truckloads of roof tiles. 2500 and something to be precise. And last but certainly not least, around four and a half thousand pieces of AAC blocks. Because this was right after the rainy season, every single one of the 10 trucks that brought us materials got stuck in the soggy soil. As a result, offloading the trucks didn't go as easy as we had hoped. Since our workers have never worked with AAC, we started with some training. The use of plastic as a moisture barrier was also completely new for them. But after some practice and explanations, the first stone was placed. Well, things did not really go as planned. As you can see, it is quite empty here. Because the bricks that we received were of substandard quality. Um, this is one of them. And guess what happens if I put it down? That. All our work down the drain. But luckily, Four days later, another supplier brought everything we needed. And yes, those trucks also got stuck. We decided to build our house out of aerated autoclaved concrete or AAC blocks. These are relatively light, offer superb insulation and are strong enough to build load bearing walls. The outside walls will have a ventilated cavity, which also houses plumbing and electrics. After finishing each course of blocks, any imperfections on the top are corrected. Instead of traditional mortar, we use a cement-based glue.
Instead of creating concrete beams above doors and windows, we use prefabricated lightweight lintels. Although lightweight, I'm not so sure about that. Another aspect of building walls is creating conduits for water, electricity and gas. Luckily this is a pretty easy job with AAC blocks. Hot water pipes are melted together at 300 degrees Celsius, so it's a good idea to wear heat resistant gloves. And then the last block is put into place. Now we build a concrete ring on top of the walls to spread the weight of the roof evenly over the blocks. After removing the casing, the concrete is covered with plastic to prevent it from losing too much water too fast. But before we can start building the roof, we first have to make the gables. Not an easy task, since there's lots of sawing involved. We also have to place several very heavy I-beams that support gable walls that have no carrying wall underneath. But finally it is time to build the steel roof construction. It is made out of trusses, triangles that support and transfer the weight of the roof to the right place. We begin by placing the 24 ceiling beams. Some of those are over 8 meters long. Then we prepare sets of rafters. Each set has its own specific length, therefore they are numbered to make sure they don't end up in the wrong place. A set of rafters is then welded upon the ceiling beams, forming a truss. Trusses don't need a ridge beam for strength. 
but we place one anyway because this makes it a lot easier to position them just right. Our construction is kind of famous because we are building a house without poles. But this is not entirely true as our terrace definitely has poles to support its roof. Now it's time to place the battens on the rafters. The battens are what hold the roof tiles up. The spacing of these is crucial and since our roof has three different heights, there's a lot of calculation involved. We're trying to organize a fireman's chain to get those roof tiles in place, but it doesn't really seem to work out. To make sure the roof tiles stay where they're supposed to be, we fix every other course with screws. Since this means that every other other course is not screwed, it is always possible to replace a roof tile by removing the tile above it. If you wouldn't do that, you'd have to remove all the roof tiles until you get down to the one you need to replace. The roof valley gutters prove to be quite a challenge, especially when you have to work high above the ground and every tile has to come from below. It took a while, but by now we have that fireman's chain well under control. By the time the roof is almost finished, it gets more and more difficult to get on and off. To work on the eaves and the gable, we use a bamboo ladder cushioned with foam, as not to damage the roof tiles. Placing the eaves board is not easy, 
But more annoying is the fact that the roof tile manufacturer's instructions are far from accurate and the board ends up 4 cm too low. As a result, the second screw of each eave style grabs nothing but air. To solve this, we place a second board on top of the first one. We also discover that the sides of the roof tiles, which are in plain view, are not painted. Another job for us that wasn't planned. And to top it all off, it also turns out that the shape of the tiles is incorrect making them look like a ragtag band of crabs walking sideways. But finally, after several do-overs, we are ready to finish the eaves. At the so-called abutment, where roof tiles meet a vertical wall, we used the tie method to seal it. Which of course, did not work. So we did what we should have done in the first place. Make place for a real abutment gutter. And then of course, build one from scratch because no one has ever heard of this. A few days later, not a drop gets in. Now the eaves are completely finished, we move on to the dormers, who also need to be waterproofed. Ready to receive their skin and window. Before we place the ridge tiles, we cut hundreds of little ventilation openings in their sides creating a so-called ridge vent. Finally, we place the ridge tiles on top of the roof and then the casco is finished. While you are watching this video, we are already hard at work with the next and final phase of the build of our house in Thailand. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot.